Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Is It Phoenix updated with War of the Spark. And the biggest addition to the archetype with War of the Spark is Finale of Promise, a mythic sorcery for accent double red, which lets you cast up to one target instant and or one target sorcery card from your graveyard with convert mana cost X or less without paying their mana costs. And those cards will also end up getting exiled. And then if you're in a late game, if X is 10 or more, you can copy each of those spells twice and choose new targets for those copies, which doesn't come up a whole lot in this deck since we have a relatively low land count but just something to keep in mind if you ever do get to the late game and have a ton of mana available and the reason why finale of promise is so powerful in this archetype is because the goal of the deck is to try and get back arc light phoenix from our graveyard which is a four mana three two flyer with haste that says at the beginning of combat on your turn if you've cast three or more instant and or sorcery spells this turn you can return arc light phoenix from the graveyard to the battlefield so if we cast finale getting back an instant and a sorcery from the graveyard we've cast the three spells required to get back arc light phoenix from the graveyard using Using just a single card so it's very easy to repeatedly get back phoenix from the graveyard using this method one of the omissions in this deck list is that we're not playing goblin electromancer which you might have seen in other builds of arclight phoenix the reason why we don't need electromancer as much is just because we now have four copies of finale of promise which makes it a lot easier to cast the three spells required to get back arclight phoenix instead of needing the cost reduction from electromancer to cast three spells in the same turn so let's take a look at our entire deck list here. At one mana we've got four copies of Opt as a cheap cantrip that lets us cry one and draw a card. And also four copies of Shock as cheap interaction dealing two damage to any target. And as you'll notice most of the spells in this deck either cost two or four mana since we're usually casting Finale of Promise for X equals two. So having these one mana spells so we can double spell on turn three or turn five makes them quite valuable. Then at two mana we've got three copies of Augur of Bolas which is a two mana one three so a decent blocker against the mono red aggro decks. Can also poke at three mana planeswalkers like the Fairy after having minus or Narset that's still at one loyalty and both those planeswalkers are quite problematic for our deck. Narset prevents us drawing additional cards and we've got a ton of card draw in the deck and Teferi prevents us from getting anything back with Finale of Promise from the graveyard since technically we're casting those spells at instant speed so that goes against Teferi's static ability. So Augur of Bolas gives us a way to poke at those planeswalkers and take them out. And of course we've got plenty of burn spells as well between Shock and Lightning Strike that we'll get to in a second. That can help us get rid of those planeswalkers as well. But unlike Goblin Electromancer, if our opponent bounces Augur of Bolas with Teferi, we still got some value because when Augur of Bolas enters the battlefield, we get to look at the top three cards of our library, reveal an instant or sorcery card from among those and put it into our hand. And the rest goes on the bottom, so Augur of Bolas can also provide a bit of card advantage. Then we've got the full four copies of Charred Cores and the full four copies of Tormenting Voice, which do a very similar thing. We can discard a card from our hand and draw two cards. With Charred Cores we get to draw first, so it's a bit better. And sometimes we'll have a creature attacking, so we can just simply draw two cards without having to discard if we just want the extra card instead. But they both also help us discard our client Phoenix from our hand into our graveyard, where we can then get it back with Finale. And then we've got the three copies of Lava Coil as additional spot removal to complement Shock and Lightning Strike to take out pesky creatures. And then we also have the full play set of Lightning Strike as more removal that can also take out Planeswalkers or go upstairs. And if you combine Lightning Strike with Shock and then Finale getting back Lightning Strike and Shock, that means we have quite a bit of burn to help us close out the game. And then we get to our win conditions where we have the four copies of Arc Light Phoenix and then four copies of Crackling Drake, which is another important one. Four mana for an 0-4 flyer that when it enters the battlefield it draws us a card. So even if the opponent kills the Crackling Drake right away, we still got some value. And Crackling Drake's power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. That distinction is pretty important because when we cast cards with Finale of Promise out of the graveyard, they do end up in exile, which will still count towards Crackling Drake's power. And also for facing graveyard hate, the Crankling Drake will still be quite a threat. So just a great win condition for our deck that can help us pressure opposing planeswalkers and then also end the game very quickly. And unlike Kefnet, Crankling Drake lines up fine against the fairy, since if they bounce a drake we still got to draw a card at least. And then our mana base is very straightforward. 7 islands, 7 mountains, 4 steam vents and 4 sulfur falls for a total of 22 lands because we have so many cantrips to make sure we can hit our land drops. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Pretty decent hands, turn one shock, turn two tormenting voice, setting up for the crackler and then both an instant and a sorcery for finale. I want to keep my land so I'll discard a shock here. 
Let's see what we're up against. All right, could be the four color Dreadhorde deck. I'll main phase the opts in case we find a tormenting voice or a chart, of course, we want to cast. And discard a land. Eh, maybe should have actually discarded the island instead of the mountain here. So we can finally plus shock in the same turn, maybe. Keep Stamio, so Jade Light doesn't die to shock anymore. We'll just play the Drake here. That way we get to pressure their Planeswalkers. And if they Teferi bounce, we still got to draw a card, so it's not too bad. Let's see what they're gonna name. Could be Wild Growth Walker, could be a Planeswalker, Teferi. Looks like they're naming Nissa. Alright, I'll take four. Alright, so now what? Definitely want to take out the Stamio. We could take out the Jade Light if we shock twice. Don't think that's necessary. So. I want to get this up to 6 power before damage, or we could shock. I think I'll just start with an opt, see what's up. Then need more lands. Alright, Lightning Strike is a nice one, since now we get to kill the Jade Light, kill Tamiyo, and then Shard Core second main. We could also play Augur on the off chance that our opponent plays the fairy bouncing Drake, so we have a one power creature to finish off the fairy. But we've got a shock anyway to finish him off, and I imagine if our opponent had the fairy, they would have maybe preferred to bounce a Drake before playing Tamio. There's the fairy. Six mana total this turn, still no Phoenix sighting. Let's just see what we draw first. Shard, of course. I think I'm just killing it. Better save than sorry. Another Teferi. That's fine. We're both drawing cards. There's a Wild Growth Walker. That's definitely something we would like to kill. Oh yeah, we can't even... Finally with the Fairy, forgot for a second. So yeah, that's not even an option. Ah, uh, yes, Crackling Drake it up. Alright, there's Phoenix. So we can opt digging for a Burn Spell. Uh, or we can Augur, but we already cast two Shocks. Whereas Opt can also find a Lightning Strike. Lava Coil works. Just want to kill this Wild Growth Walker before it gets out of hand. And then next turn we can hopefully go off. Frasca can kill the Drake. So it looks like we're gonna be fine here. Ooh, another Phoenix. So we can finale, can just play Hasty Phoenix, or play another Drake. Dealing 10 to kill the fairy seems overkill, I would rather just deal 10 to them, since that also puts them on a lower life total for command. So I'm probably just gonna lead with the chart course, and then... Shock is a good one. Alright, so we can discard Phoenix now. Wish I had tapped my mana slightly differently, but we'll be fine. So now we can shock Teferi. Finally for two. And we get to go off, basically. Get back. Lightning Strike's fine. And then... Charter Course, or Tormenting Voice. I guess Tormenting Voice. Uh, 
Uh, are they dead here? Let's see. Yeah, I'll just go upstairs. Another Phoenix. Get back double Phoenix. And that's 19 damage. They weren't exactly dead, but at one life it's gonna be difficult for them to come back. And seems fine. Turn to wild growth, so we'll have to go digging for a lava coil or a lightning strike. A lava coil will do. And then next turn we can maybe get the phoenix in the graveyard. Hmm, another one. Well, hopefully finale can deal with it next turn. So I'm gonna lead with Tormenting Voice, since we definitely want Phoenix in the graveyard anyway. So might as well do that over Charter Course. Uh, we will be unable to cast a Lightning Strike or a Lava Coil, as opposed to opting first. And I guess we want to opt anyway, since we've got Finale for the three spells, so we don't need to keep a cheap one mana spell for Phoenix. So I guess we might as well opt first. I do want the fourth land, but we're likely to find one, and I would prefer to draw a Lava Coil or a Lightning Strike here. Alright, land, so we'll play Mountain, Tormenting Voice, discarding Phoenix. And then next turn we can Finale or Crackling Drake. So it looks like Crackling Drake's gonna be unnecessary since we get to still Lava Coil the Wild Growth. Get an Opt, get a Lava Coil. Kill that thing. And do we want to chart a course? Um, I guess it's fine. Get back Phoenix. Get in there. Alright, so we've got a reasonable start. Next turn we can either Crackling Drake or Charter Course. Got a Shock has more interaction. Baby Crisis we can Shock. So how about Shock plus Crackling Drake? Sounds good. Could also just offer the trade. Don't know if our opponent's gonna take the trade here. Seems unlikely, but I wouldn't mind. So I guess it's kind of a free roll to attack first. Alright. And now I'm gonna save the shock as a cheap spell we can play next turn to maybe get back our... Arc Light Phoenix from the graveyard. Trophy to Drake, that's fine. More cards. So we're pretty far ahead on resources. And just hoping to draw more copies of Arc Light Phoenix, basically. Finale is great. So let's chart some more courses. And then keep the finale for maybe an, a following turn where we can use finale as a way to get back Phoenix instead of having to triple spell, since now we get to chart a course again. Discard land. And then we can just, I guess, chart a course another time and then shock. Since this can potentially draw us into another Phoenix, whereas Tormenting Voice wouldn't let us discard the Phoenix afterwards. And I'm comfortable racing here since we've got so much burn between Lightning Strike, Finale, getting back Shock, Lightning Strike. 
Alright, this uh, could be an issue. Although we do have plenty of ways to deal with the 3-3 and the Planeswalker. Alright, there's a Phoenix. So let's see here. In the graveyard we have Shock, Tormenting Voice. So four mana for Finale. It leaves two mana out of hand, plus maybe two if we draw land with Voice or Characors. Voice first, discarding Phoenix. Alright, no land. I mean, we don't have to finally necessarily. can just cast uh, three spells here. Lava Coil the land. And then Lightning Strike their face. I guess we should Lightning Strike Nissa on the off chance that they have like a fungal infection to make sure Nissa dies. Because the floating mana will disappear. And they'll have to fungal infection before we declare attackers, but now we get to make sure to kill Nissa. Because if we lightning strike their face, they fungal infection, then we'll be left with only 5 power, which wouldn't be enough to kill Nissa. Again, I'm fine offering the trade if that's what they want. And then we can keep up Lightning Strike for a Wild Growth Walker. Seems fine. Like, we could shard a course here. I don't think we've played land yet, but if we miss and they go Wild Growth Walker Jade Light, we could be in a bit of trouble. So I'm just gonna pass a turn. Another trophy. That's gonna give us an extra land. Sure. Tax with both. Yeah, we'll take it. So we can basically get Lightning Strike back with Finale. Can get back Lightning Strike and Shock since the, those are both instants. But we can just Lightning Strike them end of turn and then Finale should be enough. Yeah, we can almost cast finally for 10, not quite. Lightning Strike, Charter Course. Alright, sweet. Hand seems acceptable. Turn two, we can Augur. We've got Charter Course to hit our land drops. Hopefully Augur doesn't miss. Alright, great. So yeah, next turn we'll have to go digging for a land. And Augur's pretty good against uh, Monored just as an early blocker. Don't love my opponent untapping with the Steamkin necessarily, but I think it's more important that we hit our land drops here. So, Tormenting Voice or Charter Course. I guess we'll Charter Course on the off chance that we draw into a Phoenix. Could also attack and then Charter Course drawing two instead of having to discard. But I think we'd rather have Augur on defense. So let's chart. And what do we discard? Could be the Tormenting Voice. Kind of like all our other cards. Play a land, say go. And I'm fine if the Augur dies, if it soaks up a burn spell or some damage, that's totally fine. And since we do have the Lava Coil, we can still kill the Steamkin, even if uh, it gets up to a 4-4. So I'll take 3. Now we would again like to hit our land drop. It is risky if we charge course and miss on a land, because then the Steamkin is going to go insane next turn. It's pretty high risk, high reward, if we hit our land drop here or not. I think I'm gonna go for it still. Alright, great. What do we discard? Can probably ditch a Lava Coil, like their creatures don't go above 3 toughness anyway. Yeah. 
And the next one we have a few options. Probably just want to play Drake. Like, we could kill Chandra, but that kind of takes away a lot of uh, tempo. I would rather just Drake it up. Even if they kill the Drake, we got a card, and then we can still deal with Chandra next turn. If they don't deal with the Drake, then we're in a great spot. Yeah, Chandra is definitely annoying since we often have to kill Chandra, which means taking a ton of damage. Cracklin Drake's probably gonna die now. Ooh, wow, they even had a lava coil for the clean answer. Well, now we're in trouble. Down to 12. Chandra represents a ton of damage. I guess we still get to charge the course first. Hope to find a Phoenix, or we can play Augur as a blocker for Lava Runner. So I think we're far enough behind that we should just try and get lucky and try and find a Phoenix, which means. Charter coursing. No Phoenix. Guess now we could discard Augur. Could play another Crackling Drake and just try and one hit KO them. Since we do have a lot of burn in hand, maybe that's the best plan. Since I don't think we win by killing Chandra. Hey, thanks for the bits there, Ducky. Much appreciated. Steamkin, that's not a problem since that doesn't interfere with our plan of killing them with Drake. Now the question is, do we block the Lava Runner if they attack? Probably not. Down to 10. Yeah, I think we gotta take it, so they might have Wizard Sliding or a Shock. But we still wouldn't die, so how much damage can we have next turn? Three more in the graveyard, that's eight points of burn. This is gonna be nine power, 17. I guess we'll be a little bit short still. It's not impossible, I guess. Mountain. So now we could Lightning Strike their face. Finally, with Tormenting Voice, Lightning Strike, hoping to find a Phoenix and take it from there. I think that's our best bet. I guess a charter course instead of tormenting a voice here, since we want to draw into the Phoenix. Nah, no Phoenix. I did find an opt that we can discard, but I don't think it matters. Already played a land for the turn. Yeah, that's nine. 12 damage, so we're two points short here, basically. Had we found a Phoenix, we could have killed him. Oh well. And definitely seeing the synergy also with uh, Crackling Drake getting pumped by cards that are in exile. So if we cast her finally, then uh, it doesn't shrink the Drake. So yeah, close game. Um, sure. Could keep the land since we kind of need it. And Augur is going to find us more spells, but I also don't want to flood out. We don't have Tormenting Voice or Charter Course to discard extra lands. So I think I'll bottom for now. Probably could take Finale. And then we've got Lava Coil and Opt as two cards to get back. Rootbound Crank probably points towards a creature deck, so Lava Coil should be good. And it's nice to be able to make some proactive turn 2 plays with Augur 
put something in play that can attack, maybe let us draw an extra card of Chard, of course. What about Kefnet in the list? I tried Kefnet, I wasn't too impressed. It lines up pretty poorly against the fairy. We could just kill that, it's probably the safest play here. We still have Finale to get back. Lava Coil in case they play Phoenix. Alright, Dreadhorde Butcher. So opponents on uh, Jund Warriors. I guess I could have probably guessed that from the Unclaimed Territory. I would like to play the Crackling Drake. Although we also want to get the Phoenix in the Graveyard. We don't have a Charter Course or Tormenting Voice that we can get back with Finale. I think I'll just play a Drake. And then hang back with Augur. And if they kill the Drake, that's fine. We already got a card out of it. What is this? Lava Coil? Alright, that was a good turn for them. They got to add a Planeswalker to the battlefield and they got to kill the Drake. Alright, now we're kind of wishing we had maybe chumped the Butcher so we could shock and kill it. Could also just like cast uh, three spells here if we get lucky with the Charter Course. And discard Phoenix, that's probably still the way to go. Alright, that'll do. So now we get to Lightning Strike the Butcher, get back Phoenix, and finish off Domri. Let's just kill it now. They might just go face with the 4 damage anyway. Alright, they're killing Augur, that's fine. So I think I'll just shock the Domri here, make sure it dies. Still a finale to get back Lava Coil to deal with uh, Rekindling Phoenix. Alright, not a Lava Coil, it's too bad. Let's uh, lead with Augur. See what we can find. Voice. Let's discard land, don't need more. Good finale, but we're not really getting much from the finale. So I'd rather voice first. Could also opt first, although we aren't going to cast three spells this turn anyway. So, yeah, let's voice first. Alright, so had we opted first and then voiced, we could have put the phoenix in the graveyard, but we wouldn't have gotten the phoenix back anyway. So this is fine. And then next turn we can finally getting back, tormenting voice, discarding phoenix to get phoenix back. Should be able to deal with this pretty easily. Don't need more lands. Ooh, nice. Now we can't Lava Coil and discard Phoenix. Because we're land short. Maybe I should have kept a land, actually. Although we could still draw into a land with the Tormenting Voice, and we're somewhat likely to anyway. So I think I'm still gonna... Risk it for the biscuits. X equals two. Get back. Opts, I guess, also gives us an extra draw. Since we don't necessarily need to shock Sarkon, since we can just uh, attack it with Phoenix. And then get back Tormenting Voice, discarding Phoenix, since that's happening anyway. We want to land here. Alright. Another Phoenix. And now we get to Lava Coil the Dragon. And attack. And next turn we can uh, 
discard another phoenix, get back a phoenix. Still have quite a few resources to work with. That's fine. That's finally for two. Could also play Crackling Drake first, but I think this is fine. Get back, I guess, Opts. And Shard Course. So now we can make the play we mentioned. Since we can just Lava Coil from hand, we could also, I guess, Lava Coil, but then we're not getting back Phoenix. I think I'll Shard Course. So yeah, now we want to click on Shard Course first, then on Opts, Opt Resolves first. And we would get basically an extra draw towards Phoenix. We have a Phoenix in hand anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Lightning Strike would be okay, but I don't think we need it. Draw lands. Chart of course. Discard Phoenix. And we could Lava Call from hand, or we could Chart of course again. I guess if they block with Phoenix, we can just shock the token anyway. So it could be better to sh Chart of course here. Get a chance at finding maybe another Phoenix. No, no Phoenix, that's fine. Get back Phoenix, attack. And I'm not too worried about getting burnt out here. So even if they take it and attack us back for four, we're still relatively safe. And then we can keep the Lava Coil for next turn. Opponent takes it. Say go. And they're getting in burn range. Chain Whirler, that's fine. Who do they have? Maybe Status Statue? They don't. Would have been fine since we could easily get back Phoenix next turn. I guess we can Augur first. Shock is another two points. Don't think we need another Tormenting Voice since we don't have a ton of lands we need to discard at the moment, so I'll take the Shock. And then, now do we have enough burn? Still only 10. So if we draw into a burn spell with a voice, we could kill them. But if we don't draw land, we can't play Drake, but maybe that's not too bad. Don't really want to discard Lava Coil. Seems a bit too all-in. I'll discard Mountain, why not? So now we're one point short. I guess we'll kill him next turn. Lava Call the Phoenix. If they kill it in response with a Lightning Strike, we could still shock the token afterwards. And say go. Alright, GG's. Man, this deck is fun to play. Let's do one more. Alright, this is a spicy hand. Definitely keeping, hopefully find a finale at some point. Oh, well, we've got all the pieces. Alright, discard another Phoenix here. Just want to hit our land drops. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is gonna be nice. If they play Narset, I might want to shock Narset. Untap, finale. I don't know. We'll see. And it's gonna be a Sarkon instead. Alright, so we're getting back Triple Phoenix next turn. Do we wanna shock their face? Probably just shock Sarkon so we can finish him off. We also just wanted to put an instant in the graveyard anyway for a finale here, so it made sense to shock end of turn. A 
Beautiful. Nicol Bolas isn't gonna save you here. I'm afraid. Alright. Now what? Attack with everyone, they block, we shock. Kill Nicol Bolas. And do we do anything else or do we hold spells to get back the Phoenix next turn? I guess we'll see what they do here. I guess Charter Coursing is pretty good when we've attacked with our creatures. But I might hold opts just so we have another cheap spell to play to get back our Phoenix. I think we'll still be okay if we play the land here. But I'm not gonna voice in case we need the voice as a third spell. Hellkites. So they should be dead here. Sure. Get back Phoenix, attack with everyone, and that's game. Alright, well... This is the deck uh, having kind of an unfair game where we draw multiple copies of Phoenix in the top uh, 12 cards, maybe. Yeah, the deck can do some unfair things if you get lucky with Phoenix. Still a, a playable deck if you don't get lucky, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot better if Phoenix is in the top 20 cards. All right, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.